WatchOS 10 has just been released. So in this video, we're gonna cover some of the new features I think you need to know about. Hey, welcome to the video. If you're new here, consider subscribing if you're into the Apple Watch because we have a ton of tips, tricks, and tutorials all designed for the Apple Watch. Now in this video, we're talking about Watch OS 10. It's just been released and you may have the update already on your Apple Watch, but it's actually changed how the Apple Watch works. So in this video, I'm gonna show you some of those new changes and some of the new features. So let's jump in with number one. Okay, number one, the first big change I really think you're gonna notice is the swipe up. This used to take you to the control center, but that's gone and it's been replaced with a new widgets function. So essentially, if you swipe up now, this is gonna give you a contextual look at your day. So you can see here, I have the time and date. If I scroll up, I've got some Apple Watch tips. And then we've got the weather for Manchester. You can see it's raining all week here. Uh, we've got a compass, I've got my activity, I've got my calendar there, which would show me any events that are coming up. And then we've got some news as well. You can also add in other widgets here and you can have shortcuts to apps. So you can see I've got shortcuts to my messages and my uh, runs. But let's say I wanna change one of these. I can hold down any of these widgets and I can tap to change that or I can remove one of these widgets out of here. If you go to the top left, you can also add in new widgets and we can see we've got some uh, featured ones here and then we've got ones for alarms, astronomy, calendar compass, flights and some other apps that you may have. Number two, a big change that I wasn't aware of when I first updated to watchOS 10 was that you can no longer swipe across to change your Apple Watch face. Now, I used to do this a lot. I used to have one in the morning for when I was running with all of my kind of running complications. And then on the way to work, I would swipe across and change it to my smarter work watch face. You can no longer do that. So what you have to do now, it's almost the same, but instead of just swiping across, you have to tap and hold down on the screen and then you can change and edit your watch faces. A small change, but it may stump you at first. Next up, we've got a big change to how the activity app looks on the Apple Watch. So if I open up here, you can see we've still got the rings that we know and love. On the top left here, uh, this will take us to our weekly summary. On the bottom left, we've got our friends. The bottom right, we've got our kind of trophy cabinet there. And then if we go out of that and then scroll up, you can see we've got more detailed views for things like the move, exercise, our stand goals, and then we've still got our traditional view for things like our steps, our distance, and our flights climbed. Number four, the weather app has had some big changes, and I really like what they've done here. So I'm gonna go down and open up the weather app right here, so we can take a look at that. And you can see, when you first open it up, you're greeted with some live animations, a little like the iPhone. You can see here in Manchester, it's 18 degrees and it's drizzle. Uh, it tells you when the rain is gonna stop. If you scroll up once with the digital crown or your finger, you then have your hourly weather report so you can see when the rain is going to stop. You can now actually tap this and this is going to change it so you can see we've got the feels like view and it feels like 18 degrees. We've got the chance of rain which is 100%. We've got the uh, kind of windometer which tells us we've got 31 mile an hour winds uh, at the bottom and 50 mile an hour winds in the center there. We've got our UV index. Ours is currently set at 2. Um, we've got how clear the weather is as well. It says we've got 5 miles of clarity. Humidity is at 89%. And then we've got the air quality report. So this gives you an air quality report on things like pollution, dust, things like that. Ours is currently at two, which is pretty good. Now, if you scroll down on any of these, it will tell you a little bit more information about that section of the weather app. I'm gonna go back though, and uh, let's go back to the top here. And then if I go back here and then scroll up, this is where we now get our weekly view so I can see what it's gonna be like all week and it's looking like a pretty bad week here at the moment. Okay, number five. So now we know the control center is gone from the bottom. How do we access it? Well, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is tap once the little button on the side here. It's a big change, but actually I quite like it. It makes it a little bit more deliberate and now you can access that control center with just one button. Number six, we've got a big change to how the app list now views. So I've got mine in the list view, which is what I prefer. I kind of like seeing the names of the apps there. If you like it in the grid view, what you have to do now is scroll all the way to the bottom, tap the grid view, 
And now you've got a grid view that looks quite familiar, but you'll notice you can't scroll much to the left and the right. It doesn't go around in a circular form anymore. It kind of goes in a column. So I actually prefer this. It makes it a little bit easier to see multiple apps in one go. I've got quite a lot of Apple Watch apps here, so I think I might delete some of these. Let me know what you think of this change in the comment section below. Number seven, because we're using this button now for control center, what's happened to the multitasking or open app view? Well, if you wanna to get to that, simply double tap your digital crown and this will bring up all of your running apps on your Apple Watch. Number eight, we have some brand new Apple Watch faces. We always love a new face when it comes to an update. So the new faces are these. We have the Nike Globe face, which you can adjust. This is quite good if you're into your fitness. These Nike faces used to be exclusives for the Nike Apple Watches, but they seem to be appearing now on all of the editions of the Apple Watch. So that's good to see. It's another watch face to choose from. Next along, we have the palette watch face. This one's quite nice, a bit minimalistic. You can add a lot of color to this one. Uh, you can still add a lot of complications to this one as well. Next up, if you're a Snoopy fan, you're gonna love this one. This is the Snoopy watch face. Apparently it has over 100 individual animations. So Snoopy will react to the weather outside, for example, or start doing his work when you're working as well. And then next up, the solar analog face. Now this is my personal favorite because it looks more like a traditional watch face. And I think the Apple Watch actually suffers from a lack of rectangular watch faces. Too many are made to be circular and this is a rectangle face. So I like that this one is all the way to the edge. It's very simple. You can have a couple of complications on here and they've got something really cool here with the light. So as the second hand goes around, it has this little light leak following it around. I really like this one. What do you think? Let me know. And then finally, we have some big changes to Apple Maps on the Apple Watch. So with iOS 17, we now have offline Apple Maps. But what that means is when you download an offline map, maybe you're in a new city, maybe you visited London for the weekend and you don't want to use your data. If you go to London, you can download a map of London. It's going to download it to your Apple Watch overnight or while you're over Bluetooth. And it means you could leave your watch in your hotel room or at home. And you could be anywhere, of course, and use your Apple Watch for directions. I think this is really, really good. I like this if I'm on a run, maybe on a hike, and maybe I've just got my iPhone in my bag. It just means I can get directions easily now without having to worry about the reception from the iPhone. Secondly, if you do go on hikes and you use the compass feature, we now have a new 3D compass view. Just makes it a little bit easier to find Basecamp. So they are some of the new features in Watch OS 10. Let me know what you think of those in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.